Hi guys, we are here today uh, with the Power Within at Stacey's home and we are just about to have a chat with her about her life journey and her line of work. So, hi Stacey, thank you so much for having mm -hmm. us Welcome. here. <laughs> <laughs> so, it would be great to know um, what it is that you do and um, yeah, if you could tell us about it and give it a little... little. Well, I wear a lot of different hats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but presently, I work as um, sort of an integrated health coach, which means um, I bring the physicality of food into actually making the body whole. Oh, wow. So, even though a lot of my work is on a very metaphysical level, it doesn't have to be the primary as when I'm working with clients, it's happening already. And it's about really allowing them to see that connection between the mind and the body and that they are what they eat. Mm. And it's more of that there's a primary food, which is things like your career, your finances, your relationships, your spirituality, what's happening with the health of your body. And then there's our secondary food, which is actually the physical food that we eat. So what I really am zooming in on is their primary foods. That's my first concern, making sure there's okay. a harmonic balance in their life. And then we associate it with what they're eating. Because nine times out of ten, you're eating based on what's happening in your primary life mm. and vice versa. So we look at those things to make it more complete and to connect the whole body. Because oftentimes we'll work on our emotional body or work on our spiritual body or our physical body. But we rarely connect them all so that there's a wholeness. Mm. And that's, that's sort of the integrated work I like to do with people. Wow. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, so when did you start and why, why did you get, how did you get into this kind of work? I think like most of us, you just are born with it and it takes a while for other pieces to kind of connect um, together to become something that's actually tangible that you can work with. I've always loved to cook. I've always been able to talk to people and deeply listen and support them. So over the years, it just started kind of coming together mm. where I recognized that my, my cooking, because I'm, I'm also a holistic chef, a whole foods chef. Oh, wow. So I realized that I was actually healing using a lot of different modalities through food. Because once people sit down and eat, their heart opens and they're in a happy place. And that's when actually the most powerful healing can happen. And especially if they feel safe and they're feeling like they're nurtured and you're caring for them, it's a great platform you know, for them to really start doing that inner deep inner process. Mm. So it's just something I've just naturally been doing all my life, along with other things, adding mm -hmm. them in, you know, on my journey. But now it seems to be this is the platform that I'm using. Okay. And yeah, it's quite fun and easy and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and in terms of uh, your your own journey, do you consider yourself um, a, a spiritual person? Is that or a religious person? That's something we we like to ask our guests. And and because of what you're describing as your as your line of work, so with, with that. Um, that's an interesting question. I think it's something that has shifted over the years. Mm. Um, you know, I grew up as a conventional religious person okay. and then moved away from it and became a spiritual person. Now I just consider myself as a being having a very physical experience. Mm. I think we all are of spirit um, and how we practice it. Is our own individual journey. Um, I hold a lot of principles that might be classified as very spiritual, mm -hmm. but I think you can make anything you do spiritual if it's something that opens your heart, if it's something that connects you to your higher knowing, mm -hmm. and it becomes your practice, then that's your spirituality. It doesn't have to look like, for me, it doesn't have to look like a box. 
because then that's the freedom yeah. of expression and that's the freedom of movement and I personally like to have that because it helps me not to be in a space of judgment of what's spiritual, what's not spiritual. It just allows me to just allow mm. and just love and just keep aligning with what is my my truth. Okay, great. And, and in terms of truth itself, there is another thing that we like to, to talk about mm. it's in terms of soul mission. Is that something you believe? believe in do we have a purpose are we here for a certain reason or do we have to connect to our soul purpose and, and find that or or is it something that just comes along where it's naturally there or not or I, for I, <laughs> you know i really don't know mm -hmm. you know at 46 it's still a question that i'm asking because i think we hear a lot of that in our communities especially in our whether it's our secular intellectual communities and that, or our spiritual communities, that we have to find our purpose and we have to reach our potential. But yet, a lot of the people that I work with are really struggling with that. And there's a very small percentage that are really kind of moving in that direction. So I've decided to just be easy with it mm. and just be fully present. That's my purpose, okay? <laughs> it's just be fully present with what is because this journey is enough without me needing to attach anything else to it, <laughs> you know? Um, the fact that, you know, I am this being that's awakening to the greater essence of who I am is huge, you know? And that knowing in itself will lead you day by day, moment by moment, on all these individual journeys that will take you more and more into that heart, more and more into that knowing, into that inner truth of who you are, mm. why you're here, if you're here to do something specific. It's very different for everyone. Mm. So I, I think that's just my personal thing right now. I've kind of released the expectations mm. on myself and on that ego, and I'm just being and just allowing it to flow in. And if it feels like something amazing that I need to do, I can say yes to it. If it doesn't align with me, it doesn't feel resonant, I can say no. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds um, quite simple to be in the present moment, but it's sometimes the hardest. It's a practice. <laughs> it's a practice. Oh, yeah. yeah, because yeah. Our, our mind, you know, our lowest mind is is programmed to be either in the past or either in the future. Yeah. But our highest self is just, this is all there is at this moment. So to me, that's the journey. <laughs> it's just, you know, this is all there is in this present moment. And understanding that relationship, you know, that, that feels like enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and there is also um, this talk about um, the ascension movement mm -hmm. that is happening at the moment in, in the earth, gr energetic grid, basically. So is that something you're uh, familiar with? Do you believe in this kind of awakening happening all over the globe now? Or is it some, some sort of like time that we're going through now and there is everyone is kind of like elevating it? Is that something you believe um. Again, a very interesting concept. Um, something that I studied very in depth over the last several years. Mm. There is definitely something happening very differently, you know, in our human existence. Um, there is, it feels like we are waking up. We are becoming much more aware that we are more than these physical forms. Mm. And we see that. I mean, it's in our media, it's in our technology, it's in, it's everywhere. And I do believe that if you're focused on that, and that's, that's kind of the hub of your life, you're gonna attract and draw more of that to you. Mm. Um, but we're also very cyclical beings. You know, everything moves in a cycle. So are we ascending? Are we going anywhere? Well, all there is is now. Mm. <laughs> you 
we are becoming more aware of who we are, um, which is a causing an expansion of our knowing. We are understanding, at least I am understanding that we're living in a, an amazing illusion. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're living in a holographic universe, so where is there to ascend to? Because it doesn't exist. <laughs> You know, and again, it takes us back to that really present moment, which on one level, we, we feel it. There's a deep knowing that it exists. But our very small, limited minds have no concept of what that really means. And mm. that's part of our journey. So I do believe that there is a wake-up happening. You know, we're asking deep questions and we're getting some really incredible answers. Mm. And I think it's a part of our process of our journey. You know, everyone is in a different space of understanding this. So groups will get together and it's a movement for them, it's an elevation for them, it's ascension for them. And when they have learned that process and it has served them, they will move on and move to another space of awareness. Mm. Um, I don't think it's a hierarchy. I think every being on this planet is doing it wherever they are. Mm -hmm. because that awakening is coming from a higher source. It's not, you know, yeah. we're not, on our, in our lower egoic minds, we're not doing it. Yeah. It's, already, it's almost like it's already within us, like this mm -hmm. timer just clicks over, and it clicks over for everyone, and then it becomes a collective movement. So, yes, I do think we're waking up. And because we're living in a holographic universe that we're projecting, it is reflecting that. Our world is shifting mm -hmm. because we are shifting. We're okay. shifting our perception. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So is that is that God then? That brings me to the next question. God, what is God? Do you believe in God? And what does God mean to you? Is, is this power or this thing that's making this change maybe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, God, the word God is quite fascinating, isn't it? I mean, we use it in so many different terms. You know, I went through a period of time where, when I was quite religious, it was God. And then I went through a period of time where it's like, there is no God. Mm. And now I've come back to the concept of God. I think it's a name that we use because we can understand that and we can have a conversation about mm -hmm. it. I think it means a lot of different things to a lot of people. I tend to use the term because that's the most familiar in connection. But behind that word, there is an awareness that is beyond consciousness, that is everything and nothing. Mm. And it is infinite, and it is omnipotent and omnipresent, and it is that beingness that we all are. Mm. And a lot of people call that God. Well, that's fine. Or they call it the universe. Or they call it Jesus. Whatever it is to them, I think we are all aware that it exists. And that's mainly, to me, our purpose, our journey, is discovering what is, it, what is that connection. Oh, well. What is it to me? How is it showing up? And, and then once you move out of that meanness, you move into the we-ness. That, oh, it's everything and everyone. Mm. So, is there something? Yes, absolutely, because, I mean, you can just look at the planet today. We aren't that intelligent to do some of the things that are happening that we can't explain. So there is something greater that is projecting itself, you know, using this vehicle as its purpose. Mm -hmm. And I feel really, really humbled and grateful to be that instrument, to be a part of that, to allow it to flow through me as me. And I think we are all that, yeah. every being. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> Do you want to...
So we are down to our last question now, Stacy. Thank you so much for having us here, and um, it's been a very, very great pleasure having been in your home and talking to you. Thank you. The last question. It's um, it's always one of my favorites because I'm very noisy. I wanna <laughs> <laughs> I always wanna know what people are up to and um, how the journey was. Um, so what was the most amazing or the darkest experience you have had in your in your journey? Well, I could say that it it was the darkest and still the most amazing. Wow. Um, you know, I, I've spent many years in a very deep depression. And I was diagnosed a decade or more ago with bipolar. And during that time period, it was very difficult for me. Everything in my life kind of fell apart. And that's when I really started using food to deeply heal. But I also connected to meditation. And through a process of several years, actually, heal that split, that really deep split in my mind that was depressed and manic. But at the same time, it was my awakening. Mm -hmm. It was the birth of my essence, in a sense. Because that experience was mainly happening because I was denying that awareness of being something more. And I was trying to fit myself into this very small container. And my body and mind wasn't having it. You know, and it was, you know, in a sense, kicking me out. And even to this day, when I talk to people, or meet people, or work with people that are suffering from depression, I say it's actually a gift. It's waking you up. It's telling you something so deep to go within. Mm. And within, that's where that beautiful light is. That's where that freeness is. That's where that, you know, that that passion is within you. So the darkest journey was my greatest journey. Mm. It, it, you know, it kicked me into gear, <laughs> in a sense. It kicked me into that journey of awakening. So I'm, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful that it happened, you know, in my mid-twenties and started to put me on that path of just doing some really deep inner work and studying and asking and throwing everything out and starting all over again, over and over, and I'm still doing it. Yeah. So, yes, I, I, would, I would tell anyone that if they're experiencing depression or manicness or any type of emotional imbalance, you're probably being handed a gift, you know, and really ask for someone to come into your life to support you through that journey. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Stacey. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.